The message you're about to listen to is by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. So we're looking at premise. Premise is Latin. Amen. Now you just look for a title, you know, something that, you know, you don't know about. It. How's that? Ah, you know. <laughs> Praise God. So premise is Latin, and it actually means the first. All right? We're going to be studying about the first. The first. The first. The practice of keeping God first. The practice of keeping God first. So to God, the first is very important. <clears throat> the first is a statement of a pattern. It is the revelation of purpose. The first shows how the rest will be. So for example, in Bible theology, Bible interpretation, if you want to understand a particular doctrinal subject, you have to check where it was first. First mention. I'm referring to the law of first mention. So you go and check what was when it was first mentioned to understand the pattern or true scripture. Hallelujah. So, for example, where we find the first mention of image of God, it talks about a man who has dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over what all of the cattle, and over every what. Creeping thing. So that means the image of God has what? Dominion. The image of God has what? Authority. The image of God is a Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then when we look at in the epistles, we now find out that the image of God is not, or was not Adam. It was who? Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 says, who is the image of the what? Invincible God. The firstborn of what? Every creature. So the law of the first. The law of the first. If you look at Hebrews chapter 1, turn in there, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the first begotten. So when he says he's the first begotten, the Greek word there is prototokos. Prototokos means firstborn. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God do what? Worship him. Now, let me just state here when he says, bring get the first begotten into the world. The first begotten was not brought into the world via the incarnation. The first begotten was brought into the world via the world, the resurrection. Because first begotten means the first to be born out of spiritual death. You understand that? The first to actually come out of death without any person raising him up. The first begotten. The first to have the victory over death. The first to have the victory over the devil. That's the first begotten, all right, from there. So he says, when he bring the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. So the first begotten is a pattern for how everybody who is reproduced after his kind will be. So therefore, the first begotten is the pattern, the pattern son. The firstborn son is the what? The pattern son. So, for example, if you know a little bit about cars, you find, or in, about manufacturing, you're going to find out that whenever a manufacturer wants to make a product, they first of all make a prototype. I don't know if you know that. They make a what? A prototype. So, the prototype is, the, uh, is that product they want to manufacture in mass, all right, they've put everything in it, they've done everything, they designed everything, so that is how the car will look like. So now, when they want to mass produce for the populace, every single car will be made after the image of what? The prototype. Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Every single car, every single stuff will be made in, in pattern after the prototype. So whatsoever is in the prototype is in the other ones. Hallelujah. So when he says Jesus is the first begotten, all right, first begotten, first begotten, or the firstborn, what that means is that every single person in that family of the firstborn look exactly like Jesus. And God has every single thing Jesus has. The first determine the rest. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 21. We're just laying a foundation. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 15. No, 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 going anywhere. 
Help me to stay for life. The second half of the year, we're going to have some meetings. There will be glory meetings. They may not be, um, it is just amongst ourselves. Then we are going to have crusades, you understand? At least one or two. Praise God. I'm not very excited about it. I didn't see hands, so it's like some people are, but well, the devil is holding your hand down. Amen. I hope I don't stress you too much. Because sometimes when I tell my wife something, she's like, ah. <laughs> <'Cause I'm, laughs> Deuteronomy 21 verse 15. <laughs> I want to read. It says what? If a man has what? Huh. Man has two wives. Hmm. Interesting. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Christ, we have one wife. Can I get an amen? amen. Let somebody has an, an idea. Are you following? <laughs> However, if a man has two wives, doesn't mean he's going to hell. If the man was an unbeliever, and while he was an unbeliever, married more than one wife, and now he got born again, those wives are still his wives. So. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Yes, Those wives, they are seized what? They are seized what? <laughs> New creation does not unwife them. Because some things has happened in churches where people get born again. They'll say, ah, one man, one wife. They'll not say, the first woman I marry is the real wife. Why the other ones are cock It's not correct, though. No kind of be causing problem in the name of Jesus. They are wives. His wife is fine. His wives. They are his wives. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. They are his wives. Glory to God. It's not that that person may not be allowed to be a leader, pastor, or anything like that. But we do now make some, because there are some women that will now become enemies and hate Jesus. <laughs> my father, my grandfather was a polygamist before he met Christ. So after I got saved and was called into the ministry, he separated from all his other wives. Because they wouldn't come to Christ with him. Then he married my grandmother. That began a string of World War IV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? World War IV, Infinity War, against my grandmother and her kids because she was the youngest. That's not for today. Now, <laughs> he said, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another word, hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the word, hated. Now, notice so. I want to touch it about the first one, the first, because we are going somewhere with this. He says, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son, note this, be hers, that was hated. Then it shall be. When he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed what? The firstborn. Next verse, 17. It now says, But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a what? Now notice, he shall what? Acknowledge. Hmm. He shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the first one by giving him a what? A double portion of all that he had. For he is the what? Beginning of his what? His strength. The right of his firstborn is his. So that means the firstborn is the beginning of his strength. Ah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The first one is what? The beginning of his strength. Glory to God. Which means when we're talking about the firstborn, we are talking about inheritance. Correct? Correct? Then when we talk about the firstborn, we're also talking about what? The beginning of strength. Because the firstborn is the first child a man has. Now, Jesus is called the firstborn. First begotten. Is that correct? Which means that Jesus, the man Jesus, glory to God, the resurrected Jesus is the beginning of God's strength. 
Don't let me take it too far because that would take us somewhere else. But remember I've told you that Genesis 126 was what? The declaration of who? Of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? And Genesis 2, Adam. So that means that in the plan of God, in the scheme of things, who was first? Jesus. Amen. Well, let's pause that one. So let's go too far with that. Amen. Now, so you can see first, you are to, it says, <coughs> you shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn, because he is the firstborn, by giving him a double portion of that he had. Now, notice something important. The guy is the firstborn. He says the father should acknowledge and give. So that means, that what acknowledge means to respect. You understand? That means that the father is to give something to the firstborn, by virtue of the firstborn's position, and by virtue of respecting him for who he is. So that means the firstborn has certain things allotted to him, designated for him. Because he's the first. Are you following so far? Come on, are you following so far? Because he's the first. You don't, you, don't, you don't give it to the second. This belongs to the first. You don't take his position and give it to someone. No, he's the first. Hallelujah. So the first is pattern. For the rest, let's see other scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. First is the pattern for the rest. And because of what is first, there are things we do because of what is first. There are things we give to what is first. Are you getting this? Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. So, all authority in heaven and earth was given to what? Him. Acknowledging that he is what? He is the first. The inheritance of God. All God owns is given to him because he is the first. The right of the firstborn belongs to who? Jesus. Are you following so far? Hmm. Now, pay attention to what I'm telling you now. If you understand what I'm telling you now, and you practice it when I'm done with this thing, it will change your life. Oh. It will change your life. This thing I'm sharing with you. You see, because hmm, the, the, there is activities in the realm of the spirit are determined by activities on earth. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind where? Did it say bind in heaven? No. It says, whatsoever you bind where? On earth. Shall be bound where? In heaven. Which means, the status of the spiritual is controlled by activities in the physical. Are you following? That's what he said. Okay? Now see this. So look at, the, the first is pattern for the rest. Colossians 1. He says, and he's the head. Of the body. That's Jesus Christ. The church. Who is what? The beginning. Remember? The beginning of his what? Strength. Who is what? The beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have what? Preeminent. So that means God gave glory to the first. Gave the preeminence to the first. Gave the inheritance to the first. Hallelujah. Which means, do you, well, oh, glory to God. That means if, if the person is the first, or if something is first in your life, it will show whether you acknowledge that thing or person, all right, as first, based on your behavior and attitude towards that person. Do you understand? Do you understand? So, God says, this is my firstborn, Gives him all the inheritance, gives him all the glory, gives him the highest name, gives him everything, um, shrouds him glory and honor. 
And says all the angels who worship him. So it is without question who the firstborn is. Amen. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans 8, 20, 29 even shows us here that all men are to be conformed to the image of this firstborn. So everything is built around the first. Everything is planned around the first. The premise, the prototokos. He says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did what? Predestinate to be what? Conformed to the what? Image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many what? So that means he's the first and there are many others like him. So the first determines the pattern for the rest. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, in the Old Testament, you will find that there were typologies used to communicate this. You remember in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, we know that um, for the Lord was a shadow of things to come. Is that correct? Which was a shadow of things to come. Colossians 2.13 tells us that which, uh, it says the same thing, which was a shadow of what? Of things to come. So you have typologies and shadows in scripture. However, every doctrinal teaching has two things. It has the principle and it has the what? The practice. Everybody say principle, principle. and practice. Again, principle, principle and practice. Now, there are practices in the Old Testament that you don't find in the New. Because those practices were typologies. Are you following? For example, circumcision is a typology. It's a practice under the Old Testament where you had to circumcise the child. Okay, although we, we, we still do that over here. All right, it's fine. All right, we have to circumcise the child, all right, because, all right, it's keeping a covenant, all right, keeping the Abrahamic covenant. That is what the practice. But what is the principle? The principle is that to work with God, you have to shed the old man and a new man as to what? Take his place. Praise God. So circumcision is a typology of the new birth. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. So it's a typology of the what? Of the new birth. So the principle is what? To walk with God, you have to be born again. Are you getting this? Come on. Are you getting this? That is the principle. Glory to God. For example, in the Old Testament, the, uh, the high priest had to go into the holiest of all once a year, practice and offer blood for everybody else. He appeared in the most holy, uh, most holy place for all, every other person, but he appeared with blood to obtain remissions of sins for the entire nation of Israel. That is the practice. What is the principle? The principle was that the way into the holiest of all was not yet opened, and there was waiting, or there was the shedding of blood necessary, all right, for the what? The remission of sins. So without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Remission of sin. That is the what? The principle. Do you, are you getting this? Are you getting this? So, so, that is, so there is a principle, then there is the practice. So if you turn here, let's turn to Proverbs. Now, you see, in Proverbs 3, it now talks about Proverbs 3, 9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy word. Now, the practice here is according to the law. In that, whenever they got um, a harvest, the first to get ripe, they took it. Now, now that's what, see, first fruit is not under the law. Don't anyone lie to you. <laughs> Praise God. And those are people who like hearing this thing. Oh boy, I will say it. Because this is the truth. Under the law of Moses, hmm? first fruit was not the entire harvest. No. First fruit was the planted corn. Imagine you, you planting season. You put seed in the ground. Then you know, it starts growing. It starts growing. Now you know that all of those plants, not all of them will germinate at the same time. So the first to germinate, that was the what? 
So that means the first plant to have a corn, that corn, that first one, that's the first fruit. So they took that one, that one cup, and they gave it to God. Now, obviously you know that there are more corn cobs in the field. But that one they gave to God was a mark of what? Honor. So the practice of first fruits, all right, was that they gave the first that came out of the ground. Is that correct? But the principle is what? Honor. Is what? It is reverence. It is acknowledgement. To say, Lord, I acknowledge that this crop grew because of your blessings. So as a result, I present the first to you. Now notice, the first is presented to God under the law to foreshadow when God was going to present his own first. Hey, 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 are you following? Church, are you people, should we pray in tongues? I don't understand what's going on with people. You are following. Hey, respond now. What's going on? Did they pour cold or did it rain this morning? We shifted the rain to Saturday. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> so you can come to church. Don't worry. If I just be fine. Are you following what I'm saying? Now listen. <laughs> ah, we too can shift rain. No? Oh, yeah. Bone that. Thing. <laughs> we are rainmakers. <laughs> One day is your problem. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> All right, what was I saying? So they gave their firsts under the law because God was going to give his firsts. You getting it? Just like God said to Abraham, give me your son, thy only son, Isaac. It was to typify when God was going to give his son, his only son, who? Jesus. Are you seeing this? So the practice of first fruits, all right, was that they gave the first that came out of the ground. It was not just the first that came out of the ground. Let me even show you. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 26. It was the first of anything. It was the first of the crop that came out of the ground. It, if they had cattle, the first cattle to give birth in the year, that first one, that first one belonged to God as a mark of honor. In fact, all right, when they gave birth to children, the firstborn was holy to the Lord. So that means the firstborn child belonged to God, and under the law of Moses, for that child to continue growing with the parents, they had to go and redeem the child. So they will pay redemption money. They will go to the priest and give money and say, I want to keep my child. There was only one example of someone who didn't do it, and that was Anna. In First Samuel, in Second Samuel chapter, uh, First Samuel chapter two, where she in, in verse one, in chapter one, she swore that God, if you will give me a son, I will give it back to you. What she was saying was that if you will give me a son, my firstborn, I will not redeem him. And after she gave that son to God, the Bible says that she had how many sons left after five, five. Amen. Five. So let me just look at show you some other scriptures. Well, I will now bring the salmon home. Because we say, Pastor, is this about first fruit? No, it's not. Just <laughs> to show it after 26. So look at it. I want to just show you 26 and 10. Hallelujah. Look at it. Judgment 26, 10. Yeah. He says, and now. This is talking about, it's talking about, let's start from verse um, 8. Because it was, it's talking about, the, it says, God is, because in Deuteronomy, they've not gotten into the promised land. So, he says, and the Lord brought us forth, this is the, 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 the Jew talking. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs and wonders. So that means, he's talking about what God has done, right? Right? N next verse. He says, and has brought us into this land, into this place, and has given us this land, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So that means God has given us the land. He brought us out of Egypt, and he has given us the land. Look at 10. He said, and now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of what? So that means that 
because of what you have done, I'm bringing these first fruits in honor and respect. Oh, come on now. Are you following? In honor and respect. So that means you did this, you did this, and you brought me to this land. As a result, I'm giving you this out of honor. An acknowledgement of what you have done. Amen. So he says, which thou has, the Lord has given me, and thou shalt set it up before the Lord thy God, and do what? And do what? Worship. So that means to worship is to who? To honor. My time is because I'm still going to minister to you guys. Where I go? Amen. To worship is to what? <clears throat> so the principle is honor. The principle of honor is inter or cross testamental. It is not limited to any testament. While the practices may be limited to testament, but that principles, principles and ordinances are forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at Exodus 23 verse 19. Or, or, or just write Exodus 23 19 and Exodus 22 29. And let's go to Numbers 3 36. Numbers 3 36. Hmm. Numbers. Book of Numbers chapter 3. Iwe numberio, 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 ekekpe numberio. All right, can we read one to go? It says what? And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari, shall be the boss of the and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serve it thereto. 37, everybody read one to go. It says what? And the pillars of the court are round about, and their sockets, and their pins. Okay, go on. 38, it says what? But those that encamp before the tabernacle towards the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation is what? Shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the child of the sanctuary, for the child of the children of Israel, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. 39, it now says, And all that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered, at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males. Here again, All right. All the males from a month old and upward were 20 and 2,000. All right. Next verse. All right. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the what? Of the males of what? The children of Israel from a month old and upward. And take the number of their names. 31. He says what? And thou shalt take the Levites from me. I am the Lord. Instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites, instead. Of the firstlings among the cattle of children of Israel. Next verse 42. And Moses numbered as the Lord commanded him all the firstborn among the children of Israel. 43 now says, all right. And all the firstborn males by the number of names from a month old and upward of those that were numbered of them were 22,200, three score and what? And 13. All right, next verse. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, what? It says, take the Levites instead of the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the ch- cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. Next verse. All right. And for those that are to be redeemed. Are you seeing this? Of the 203 score and 13 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites. Go on, for seven. Thou shalt even take what? Five shekels apiece by the pole. After the shekel of the sanctuary shall thou take them and shekel. So what he's saying is, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Levites instead of the firstborn of these kids, or, or, of the, all the other tribes. But you have to now cause all those firstborn to what? Redeem themselves. Are you following that? Because it was, the firstborn was, it's a mark, to giving the first was a mark of acknowledgement and honor to who? To God. Because you were saying, this is the beginning of my strength. Hallelujah. Out of honor, I render to you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you find that that principle was a principle of honor and respect. Now, many in our, um, you know, Christ, Christ is this, Christ is that, grace, 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 grace mindset, you find out that we get to that point where we now become irreverent. 
You wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is not pray, is to check Twitter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's to check Twitter. Money comes into your hand. The first thing you do is to buy the, you think of what, what, you know, what can I do for myself? What can I use for my? You understand? You're thinking of yourself first. First. So instead of him being first, you've put yourself in the place where he should be. You have a life-changing decision you're about to make. You consult every other person first, then you resort to him last. So, first, God first is a principle. What did I say? God first is a principle. Louder, God first is a principle. It's a principle. It starts out with, what do you do when you first wake up? Look at Jesus. Let's look at Jesus. You find out, all right, okay, you can even start from the psalmist. Look at Psalm 63 verse 1. Psalm 63 verse 1. said, O Lord my God, early will I seek thee. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. That means the first thing I'm going to do is to seek you. First thing I do. Early will I seek thee. Not, I won't seek my phone first in the morning. I won't seek my spouse first in the morning. I'll seek you first. Early will I seek you. My soul tests for you. My flesh longs for you. In a drowned, testing land where no water is. What does this tell me? This tells me that what you long for the most is what you will seek first. You, say, you, you are saying, you long for God. Lord, I desire you. I'm hungry. Who do you seek first in the morning? Who do you want to hear from first in the morning? Remember, the first determines what? The rest. If you start your day with God, it will determine how the rest of your day would be. Now, in the Old Testament, they gave the first to sanctify the rest. Let me show you. Look at the book of Romans. 11. And verse 16. So in the Old Testament, they gave the first to sanctify the rest. So that means what they're saying is, if I gave the first, that means, and the first is holy, then every other thing from which this first came from is what? Is holy. Because the first is a pattern for what? The rest. So that's why we cannot be described as unrighteous and unholy if Jesus is holy. Because he's the first. Glory to God. So our descriptions is going to be in accordance with who Jesus is, as he is. So are we. He's first fruit, first born. So we also are like him. Hallelujah. Everybody doing 16. He says what? For if the first fruit be what? Holy. The lump is also what? Holy. And if the root be holy, so are what? The branches. So if I give my first waking moments to God, I wake up and I start praying and I read my Bible. The first thing I do, I've sanctified the rest of the day. So you can say, Pastor, I, I can read my Bible anytime. Yes, I can pray anytime. Yes, but you are missing out the principle. It means, you see, if I prayed by 10 o'clock, after I've spent all day doing other things, it means that my acknowledging of God is that God comes after I have done everything else. Oh, come on. Do you understand? He has come. He comes after I've done everything else. So, I mean, after I have spent time on social media, after I have gone to this, after I've watched that movie, after I've watched the series, after I've read this book, now I have done everything. Okay, God, where are you? Let's talk. <laughs> you have a decision to make. 
You consult every other person. Then after, you say, God, after every other person, I just, let me just ask you, what do you feel? So you find out that when God is not first, his words are not law to us. They are opinions. And that is why many of us, we have, because God is not first to us, we have elevated the opinions of men above the instructions of God. Listen, this is what we are doing, all right? And this is where the problem is. Because if you study in scripture, you will find out that whenever honor was present, the fire of God fell. Whenever honor was present, the glory of God was manifested. Solomon, when he was being dedicated as king, when, when he came to dedicate the temple, after he, had, I'm sorry, after he had been made king, the first thing Solomon did, listen, the first action of Solomon. Everybody say the first. Everybody say the first. After Solomon was made king, the very first thing Solomon did, very first thing, was that he went to the house of God and offered 1,000 bond sacrifices. What? First thing, what is he telling you? By that action, he's saying that I honor and acknowledge who? You. What happened? That night, the Bible said that night, God appeared to him. What do you want? Honor will command the response. Honor will do what? I said honor will do what? It will command the response. You see, this is what many of us are missing. You see, because whenever you find a company, all right, where there is a lot of knowledge, but that knowledge is not matching in terms of manifestation, what is missing is honor. What is missing is reverence. What is missing is respect for that which is holy. As a Christian, you must have a, um, a, 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 a principle, a culture of reverence. All right? Reverence will include that I cannot touch. It belongs to God. That time, I can't touch it. It belongs to God. That money, I can't touch it. It belongs to God. God has asked for it. He has need of it. I, I give it up to him. Reverence. Honor, respect. Respect. Acknowledgement. Because you are saying, by that action, my time on earth, you gave it to me. Therefore, I acknowledge that you gave it to me by spending my first waking moments with you. Are you following? Come on, are you, is anybody following this? My time on earth, you gave it to me. Therefore, I consult you first on decisions I am to make. I don't ask for your opinion. I consult you on the decisions. What am I supposed to do? First, the realm of the spirit is response to honor. Hallelujah. He responds to honor. Look at, look at Jesus, and I'm going to close in like five minutes, then we pray. Look at Jesus. Let me show you something. Ah, don't miss this thing. Don't miss it. This is why some believers can be unprofitable. And why others will be extremely profitable. Honor. When I finished from medical school, there are jobs I didn't take. Do you know why? I said, I can't take this job. It's going to interfere with my ministry. I can't take it. When I finish from school, let me, let me, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> let me tell you what, when I finish from school, right, and I'll just show you, I'm just telling you something, when I finish from school, hmm? when I finish from school, started working, when I wanted to get, I told them, whatever we are doing, they say you are doing weekends, and I said, I have no problem, you alternate weekends, no problem, I said, but on Sunday, I'm going to be in Georgia, so, between the hours, we agree the hours. Say between hours of 7 and 12. I won't be allowed. But every other time, I'm fine. I'll be available. Praise God. Then there was one job I got. They said I should come and walk. You will walk. Then you will do weekend. You know the weekend. You will start Friday. 
then you will, can only leave the hospital on Monday. He said, for now, 20,000. That was like 10 years ago. I said, I can't do it. So what? I said, no, I can't do it. I have church. It's not even enticing. It's not even enticing. You know, some things are, you have to get to a point, point with God where some things are not temptations. When I finished from school, I got a call from Canada. My mom's sister's daughter married a, a, a Nigerian Canadian, the guy who owns hosp- uh, a chain of hospitals in Canada. He called me up. He said, Alpha, let's come now. We are coming back to Canada. Let's do this thing. Let's come and write exams. I'll move there. I said, ah. I said, sir, I can't do I'm called into ministry. Lord says, I should do in Nigeria. I said, you're what? You're called into what? I said, yeah, come and do it in Nigeria. I said, he didn't say I should come and do it in Canada. He said, I should stay in Nigeria. Ah. They called my mother. My mother called me, Femi, what are you saying now? The, yes, and here was what I was, the, the church was meeting Dida's Hall, Dida, you know Dida's Hall. We didn't have issues, and I was sacrificing Canada and all of that. Imagine if I had moved to Canada. What you'd be hearing is Dr. Femi Olaleye. <laughs> Mogu. I'll be doing live video of neurology and, you know, you know, in advanced dementia. I'll be coming and judging, you know, advanced dementia. But inside, inside, I will know that I, ah, you follow what I'm saying? Things you can't touch. Hallelujah. Same principle. I say, I can't, I can't touch this. No, this is, this is, this is the Lord's. The principle is the same. When money comes to my hand, I know, I know I, what I cannot touch. So it's not negotiating. We are not negotiating it. When I wake up in the morning, ah, I have to pray. Back. In fact, if I wake up in the morning and I miss praying in the morning, let me tell you, that day is going to be terrible. How many of you have withdrawal symptoms when you have not prayed? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You'll be feeling like you have stolen somebody's goods. You understand? You'll be feeling somehow like, ah, I've not prayed. Ah, you, you'll be, you understand? Why? Because some, it, you are grieving the spirit. That's where you are feeling. That thing you are feeling is called grief. You are feeling, you are grieving the spirit because you are taking what doesn't belong to you. That first day, that first few hours is the Lord because the Lord put you here for a reason. And he put you here to manifest his kingdom on earth. And for you to manifest his kingdom on earth, you need to get the new information. You see, the Bible talks about that the message of God, they are new where every morning. So it is it's a fresh thing. Give us this day our word daily. So it is something you get every day. Hallelujah. Every day. Stealing from him. You are robbing him and other people of the opportunity of what he wanted to tell you. Do you know how many people have died because you are not sharp prophetically? Do you know how many people have been wasted because you didn't listen to the instruction that God needed you to hear that would have made you more financially capable to give more people scholarships? Do you know? You think you are here for yourself? You're not here for you. No. Think about it. The son of God came on that. Was he here for himself? Did he live for himself? He didn't even die for himself. He died for you and I. Which means when God plants a seed in the ground, he didn't plant it for the benefit of that seed. No. He planted it for the benefit of every other person that needs to eat from that seed. So every single time you miss your step, people will suffer. Hallelujah. I always tell folks, when God raises a man or a woman, he raises that man or woman, not for that man, but for others. He raised Jacob for Esau. So many descendants of Esau now are born again because Jacob was chosen. He raised Moses for Israel. He lays Elijah for Israel. Raised Elisha for Israel. John the Baptist for Israel. He raised Jesus for us. Raised Paul for us. If not for Paul, we will be reading the epistles. When God raises a man, he raises that man, not because that man is better than the others. No, he raises that man for the benefit of others. So when you are out of touch, when you are not in fellowship, when you are not in contact, when you are not getting the details you need to get, taking the decisions you need to take, going in the direction you're supposed to go, getting the training that you're supposed to get, people suffer. Glory to God. The first. 
Glory to God. The first. Lift your hands and say, Lord, from today, what belongs to you, belongs to you. I won't touch it. I won't share it with you. I'll give it up to you. Now listen, it's a mark of honor. Learn it. Be conscious of it. You know, some think that, okay, I'll say about myself. Now, many of my colleagues still do night and still do all of those in their own duty and stuff like that. I don't have that kind of, do you understand? I work in the bank. <laughs> Amen. So, my decision not to touch what belongs to God made God lead me in some other way that was really my own way. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. So the truth about it is that when the first, you give the first to God, it's time, and, and you acknowledge him, you will cause the realm of the spirit to open up to you like never before. So listen to me, and listen to me well. Stop compromising. Stop it. You are robbing yourself. You are cheating yourself. Stop compromising. Stop it. Hallelujah. Stop it. Stop the compromise. The compromise in prayer. The compromise, all right, in coming to church, receive training. Having every other excuse in the world why you don't receive the training. The compromise in giving. Oh, ah, so that means some people do how they give. After they've settled everything, and I say, oh, okay, ah, let's give God. Let's not forget God, though. Yes, let's not forget God. Me, the money comes in, I got you. In fact, that times when if I come, another one comes in, we take it. Uh, okay. I have it standing. There's a, you know, I have it saved. But this account, but this account. You understand? That's what I do. My, my success is not an accident. I will continue to succeed. I have invisible forces packing me up. I will, eh? And my success is not dependent on you. My prosperity financial is not dependent on you. Not. Mm. Miss man, trust me, I'm not sitting there waiting for someone to come and so sit me. Ask my wife. Praise God. It's good to honor your pastor and all that. But me, I'm not praying one day, Father, give up. Me, Femi Olala, it's not me. Go and ask God. I don't do it. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> what? The Babala was the shrine. I have the secret place. Glory to God. I'm backed up. Full. I, I load glory to God. <laughs> Amen. I surround. Full confidence in my backup. Can never lose. Never. 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 So I've learned it. What is this? I don't touch it. Praise God. Don't touch it. The work of God doesn't suffer. I, I don't touch it. Because the Lord, what do you want us to do today? You speak in tongues. So whenever I tell him to do something and I'm delaying, he will be reminding me. And when he says, ah, and whenever I, I say, Lord, I'm sorry. Sorry, Dad. Lord, I'm sorry. We will do it. We will do it. We will do it. I don't get arrogant. No. Because he is the Lord. Someone said something. said, Jesus is our brother. Uh, amen, no. I hope you said it with reverence. Ah, he's our brother. He's our senior brother. We are, we are and him, we are equal. Eh? <laughs> so you too, you are Lord. <laughs> uh, Lord, sir. Well done, no. You too are Lord. You are equal with Jesus. This revelation, revelation of Jesus. <laughs> you are not equal with Jesus. He's the firstborn. Whatever equality you have, this is the one he gave you. So you are you, you are because of who? Him. Don't forget it. That's why we, in heaven, now, now so so we worship God, they worship him. All the song revelation is to the Lamb. To whom who sits on the throne 
and unto the Lamb. In fact, that's not even correct. It is to him who sings on the throne, even unto the Lamb. So that means the one on the throne is who? The Lamb. He's not your mate, though. Stop dragging things with him, oh. You are dragging boyfriend with him. He says you give up boyfriend. You are dragging it. You are dragging it. You are dragging girlfriend with him. Glory to God. I've never had a time when the Lord asked me to give something or spend time doing this or this thing, and I didn't get reward for it. I, I didn't do it to be rewarded. But it's just so generous. God is so generous. So don't be doing... Give him his first. Everybody say first. Say God is first. Say I acknowledge him as first. Say you should give up the cigar. You say you like it. Continue smoking now. You say you should give up this. This in Yoruba they call it areke areke. You say you don't want to. You say we give you the ability. Just say Lord I'm ready. You say no. Continue. Give up these bad friends. Bad influences. Continue. He has to be first. Listen let me tell you something. God is not going to accept being second. You cannot revise him. You cannot do counseling for him. You cannot advise him. He is God. Your small peanut brain cannot know more than him. He will not accept number two. You want to see his glory? He must be first. You want to, you want to see mighty manifestations? He must be what? First. Not first. Lord, I put you first. It's not song. I put you first, my Lord and my Father. Mm -mm. Practice. Put him first. Lift up your hands towards him. Speak in other tongues. I would have thought that the tongues would come out more than that. Come on, just lift your hands and talk in other tongues. Talking tongues. Ah, I'm jealous. <sighs> Talking on that one. Talking other tongues. Oh. Talking tongues. tongues. Talking tongues. Just talking tongues. Ah, time is gone, but lift up your hands, everybody. Talking on the tongue. Hallelujah. Everybody, lift up your hands. Let there be some quiet in the hall. Just lift up your hands. Everybody, lift up your hands. Eyes closed, hands lifted up. And let the wave of God's glory, the presence of His Spirit, like a mighty flood, flow through this room right now. Right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, let that power of God strip us off everything that is worldly, <laughs> everything that does not belong. Now, by 
the operations of the Spirit. Everything that doesn't belong, we declare, Lord, we walk faster, we move lighter, even in the name, even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.